Thank you, Evelina, for organizing it. And uh, I'm happy to be first speaker on this uh, IntelliCage webinar. So presenting my story, how did I get, fall in love with uh, IntelliCages? So, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I was uh, studying or studied in Helsinki in 1998, 99 to, uh, to develop and then set up this uh, mouse behavior phenotyping laboratory here. And during these uh, PhD studies, um, which I ended at 2006, I had a chance to uh, attend and participate uh, two excellent courses where David was actually one of the organizers and Hans Petter lived. The first one was in Zurich 2001, the EMBO course. And there actually uh, I saw the, the first time the prototype of the IntelliCage. So I, I, I'm not sure if this picture is, is actually exactly what was there, but it's, it's quite similar. And then a year later, uh, I had also, I was lucky to, to attend the summer school in, in Russia. Uh, Hans-Peter Lipp uh, told about the Bubonitsi uh, field station. Uh, in, in his webinar recently, and, and uh, that's then the place actually where the roots of IntelliCage uh, uh, are. And then after I, I got my uh, thesis uh, defended, uh, I had uh, another uh, lucky uh, coincidence. Uh, uh, Hans Petter and, and David proposed uh, me to join their group for the project of uh, IntelliMaze uh, during three, three years, 2007-2010. And uh, this IntelliMaze was an uh, EU-funded uh, funded project uh, where uh, several groups were working together a little bit uh, or quite similar uh, to our tea time action. Of course, much, uh, much less people, I think there were uh, um, 20, 30 people involved in, in, in total, and, and it was organized uh, as, a, as a research uh, part or scientific part, and, and then software and hardware uh, development, technology development, uh, and, uh, and in these uh, uh, research parts, uh, uh, we in, in Zurich uh, were responsible uh, to pro make a profiling of brain lesions, hippocampal, striatal, and, um, and uh, prefrontal cortex lesions, um, and to develop intelligent tasks. Um, uh, and then the group in, in Rome, Enrico Alevo and, and Igor Pranki and, and Francesca Ciru uh, Cirulli, uh, they were working on uh, depression and anxiety models and group in uh, uh, Karolinska Institute, Stockholm, uh, uh, Mohamed Abdul and, and Ali, uh, Alina Kotita, they were working on Alzheimer's models. And uh, uh, then uh, about, uh, before going to, to, to some uh, uh, outcomes of this project, uh, I give a very quick uh, overview for those who are not yet uh, familiar with IntelliCage, uh, what, uh, what this system is. And, and it's, it's a large cage. Uh, Techniplus 2000, uh, uh, the brand name uh, for, for this cage itself, uh, but it uh, uh, contains inside uh, uh, the four conditioning corners that look like this, where the uh, uh, drinking bottles uh, can be inserted. And in this cage, uh, uh, 10 to 12, even to 16 uh, animals can simultaneously be uh, uh, kept so so it's a, a real group housing situation and uh, when the animals enter the corner then they see their two holes uh, uh, when poking the nose into these holes uh, uh, they can get access uh, to uh, water bottles and uh, these are actually the uh, original slides from David. Uh, uh, I I'm, I'm also have used them quite a lot because they, they show very nicely how this IntelliCage works. Uh, so there are three main things that uh, IntelliCage records. The first one is visit them when the animal is uh, entering the corner and these uh, RFID uh, transponder tagged animals are identified by the antennas. 
in the corner. So the uh, start and end of the visit. Uh, in addition, there is a, a presence sensor, thermo sensor, uh, which together with uh, with antenna then records the animal in the corner. And when it's uh, going out, then then the finish uh, uh, visit is ended. Then, in addition, uh, there are uh, infrared uh, sensors registering the uh, start and end of the nose spokes. So the number and duration of the nose spokes to either side are re recorded. And when the door is open or the gate is open to the bottle, uh, then the mice can make uh, licks uh, on the bottle. So three things are recorded, visits, nose spokes and licks. And uh, uh, this uh, system uh, permits implementation of uh, many different uh, uh, learning procedures um, uh, for uh, kind of appetitive learning. The access to water can be restricted and uh, therefore used as a reward. Or discrimination learning, the side learning, also using the visual stimuli, uh, the uh, LEDs uh, uh, above the, the uh, holes. Uh, where the water can be delivered and also avoidance learning because um, on top of the corner uh, there is an air inlet uh, where the air puffs can be applied as aversive stimuli so the animals uh, will escape from the from the corner and then may develop uh, aversion to this uh, uh, this corner based on that. And any behavior, uh, visit, no spoke or lick can be defined as a correct, neutral or incorrect, uh, depending on the place and time of occurrence. So the place uh, uh, four different corners and moreover uh, two sides in, 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 in each corner. So it has a, a quite a lot of uh, possibilities to, to make up your design. And, and then they have a corresponding influence on the, on the actors, the doors, lights, or air puffs. So, so uh, many, many different combinations is, is possible. <laughs> but uh, in order to set up uh, uh, the, the experiment, uh, then we are talking about experimental design, but it's, uh, it's equally difficult to become an IntelliCAD designer because um, it, uh, it is, uh, in the end, Fairly simple uh, uh, graphical interface, how to connect all these behaviors to actors through different uh, uh, steps in order to make, uh, uh, for example, then to uh, doors open or close the animals to, to have uh, access to water. But as you see, uh, the more complicated it gets, uh, uh, the more errors uh, uh, are, are possible to make and, and one has to really carefully uh, check and validate uh, the feasibility of the protocol, uh, what you apply to the animals. And that was the uh, first thing to learn. And uh, when I entered the, the lab uh, then in 2007 in the Zurich, then we started immediately to work. And then because the project was already ongoing, uh, but uh, for at least uh, uh, first first full year, uh, this uh, uh, response was uh, was quite um, uh, um, kind of uh, uh, common. If you entered the laboratory in the morning or in the evening and see that the controller has encountered a problem and needs to close, so it was a, a lot of interaction then uh, with uh, with software developers uh, and uh, and development of this. Um, uh, uh, a system uh, in order to be really reliable and robust uh, uh, for working with them. And, uh, and we started with many explorative experiments to, to try out uh, the limits of the mice, uh, what the mice can do and what they cannot do and learn in the IntelliCage, what are the normal responses and challenges. And uh, uh, I think we have got uh, uh, gonna went through a quite uh, quite significant development uh, since 2005 when the first IntelliCage paper was published. Uh, by now, uh, every year, uh, close to 20 papers are already published, and they were nicely reviewed by 
Anna and Evelina and, and their colleagues in a, in a quite recent review in behavioral brain research. Um, so it's, it's really a good, um, uh, good resource for IntelliCage users and, and also those who uh, want to try to, to use it. But then the validation of the IntelliCage, uh, what, uh, what we uh, uh, try to assess, uh, testing of inbreath strains, brain lesions, transgenic and knockout models. And uh, one of the main aims uh, of this IntelliMaze project was to, uh, 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 based on 99 paper, uh, the uh, environment and uh, uh, Crab and Wolston and, and uh, others, uh, you may know it well, uh, different uh, results from different laboratories. We, we did the same approach here with IntelliCages. So four laboratories, Zurich, Karolinska, Rome and Hamburg, uh, they had IntelliCages and, and uh, we did a, uh, three sets of experiments with uh, Black 6 TBA and F1 hybrids of those uh, uh, to test the uh, uh, outcome of, uh, of the experiments and how, uh, how a repeatable, reproducible disease. And, and these publications in Genes, Brain and Behavior 2010, uh, we were happy to uh, report that the basic behavior and learning measures proved to be highly consistent in the IntelliCage, uh, providing a valid basis for meaningful research hypothesis testing. And we suggested that the absence of human interference during testing was the most prominent advantage of the IntelliCage and uh, suspect that this is likely responsible for between laboratory consistency of, uh, of findings. So I'm not going into the details of these uh, figures here. We did also another experiment uh, where we added some, uh, uh, some enrichment and add-ons uh, on the cages, uh, again in four different laboratories, so-called social box where animals can freely enter uh, an external, external area and animal gate where the uh, access to external area is regulated. And in principle, the outcome was similar that uh, strain differences were reliably uh, detected in, in all four uh, laboratories. Then I came back to Helsinki and set up my own lab there where I have six IntelliCages and, and also uh, these uh, social box tubes or connecting tubes so I can connect IntelliCages to each other and, and so on. And uh, just a, a few uh, things to uh, uh, remind uh, that uh, also the automated devices still need regular monitoring by researcher or caretaker. So there may be uh, still uh, uh, occasions where the animals do not show visits, do not show licks. Uh, which, which are monitored by the software, and then the reason for that needs to be uh, 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 found out. And, and the most uh, uh, common problems uh, there may be the, the lost transponder, the animals are, have lost transponder, or transponder is, is not functional, or then some problems <clears throat> with these uh, gates, uh, uh, the magnets on the, on the doors and gates, uh, or the liquometers are uh, uh, not functioning properly. So overall, the, the system is, uh, has been proved to be quite robust and, and requires quite minimal uh, uh, service, uh, of course, uh, the cleaning and everything. Uh, we provide a good uh, amount of enrichment in the cages, uh, a, a thick uh, layer of bedding with, uh, with food pellets and, and handling tubes and, and houses and wood, uh, um, wooden blocks uh, in order to make the, the, the environment comfortable for mice. Uh, this is just interesting that very rarely uh, over these uh, 15 years, a uh, few times I have seen such an interesting uh, exclusion of the, from the group. So animal just uh, hanging on the, on the grid and, and uh, apparently not visiting, so not accepted in the groups. And then these are, these are female mice. Uh, and then the, from 129 background, in fact, uh, we, we have had these animals. So just like uh, anecdotal evidence or, or something that, that uh, may, may happen. Uh, then we are always interested in how automated monitoring in, in these new devices is related to traditional uh, uh, standard testing or conventional testing. Uh, 
here in this paper, we, we uh, compared plaxics and Taupsi mice, and, and they showed a, a well-known difference in, in open field behavior, in activity and center distance, and quite similar uh, difference was also revealed in, during first, first hours uh, in the IntelliCage. Uh, with uh, B6 mice being more active. Then we get a nice uh, uh, circadian profile, uh, such as two peaks of activity in B6 mice and also quite high activity during the light period, which is confirmed from study to study and also between laboratories. So it's useful for different, uh, different things. And then another example of initial behavior in the IntelliCage, uh, free strains 129 B6 uh, DBA, in open field, nicely discriminated, and uh, exactly the same discrimination also in IntelliCage during first hour and first six hour based on the visits to the corners. And uh, uh, David and others uh, made a nice uh, uh, analysis of more than uh, 1,500 mice uh, uh, tested in, in Zurich uh, and showed the value already first week of, uh, of basically spontaneous behavior in the IntelliCage, how valuable this can be for discriminating the strains, lesions, and mutations. Uh, then one of my uh, favorite uh, uh, learning tasks, we, we tried different things, the corner preference and patrolling and, and so on. Uh, eventually, for me, uh, the best or, or favorite model uh, sorted out to be so-called flexible sequencing, what we did in collaboration with Japanese uh, researchers, also a multi-laboratory study, where the animals during the drinking sessions, so they are uh, water deprived, they have a certain time when they have access to water. Uh, uh, need to patrol between uh, two opposite corners and then other two corners uh, during these sessions never give the reward. So animal goes from correct corner, gets the reward, then to opposite <laughs> corner, gets the reward, and then shuttling between these two. In a way, we can measure both <coughs> working memory errors when the animal re-enters the corner just rewarded, but also reference memory errors. When it visits the corners which are never rewarded. And, and here we see the uh, improvement over the over the days, four days, and then this kind of reversal effect. What is nice to see that over four reversals, this uh, 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 drop down is uh, less and less so the, so the mice can really uh, remember from the previous and then to catch up more quickly uh, to the new uh, uh, or direction of, uh, of shuttling. And here we did uh, uh, used it uh, in one uh, mutant uh, mouse line testing. And, and here again, we, we had a standard test, uh, conventional test in water maze, where we saw a traumatic, uh, uh, yeah, of, uh, traumatic or whatever, quite significant impairment in reversal learning, the new learning in water maze. And also in this uh, shuttling task, the first acquisition was quite okay, similar in uh, between these uh, lines. But then with each reversal, uh, the mutant mice uh, were worse and worse uh, uh, compared to wild type mice. So uh, it's, it's not yet probably the complete replacement of, uh, of standard tests, but it shows that, uh, that these kind of things can be were well studied in group house settings by automated monitoring. And I think that I should uh, uh, speed up. Uh, I will just mention two other tests that I, I like that are in my uh, IntelliCage battery. So uh, another one is uh, such an impulsivity test. Uh, uh, kind of uh, equivalent uh, for five choice or three choice uh, uh, serial reaction time task, which takes uh, weeks or months uh, to train the animals um, for that. Uh, but here we can do uh, it in, in seven days in principle. So the animals have to suppress uh, after initiating of trial, they have to wait uh, until they make a no spoke in order to get the reward. And, uh, and also in this model, uh, we can see uh, the improvement in wild type and then the uh, uh, impairment in, in uh, one mutant strain. 
and especially at longer delays, uh, uh, the impairment becomes evident. So we have applied uh, the delays uh, 0.5 to 3.5 or 4 seconds um, to wait uh, for the animals, um, just because this is a special setup. And we can use also it for delay discounting uh, using water and saccharin, the sweet solution, uh, to make the animals wait first to test the spontaneous preference for saccharin, and then to make the animals wait for saccharin how long they are willing to, to wait before uh, going to easy choice for, for water, which is, uh, which is immediately available. And uh, obviously, yes, we, we have tried here uh, for several, uh, in, in several ways, these taste preferences with uh, uh, taste modalities uh, with ethanol, uh, saccharin, and so on. So these eight bottles, four different corners, uh, uh, give a quite nice uh, possibilities, in my opinion, to, to test for these taste preferences. And finally, that was uh, like a, a aim uh, of, uh, of the IntelliCage project from IntelliCage to develop to IntelliMaze. I remember uh, shooting of this picture in the corridors of uh, University of Zurich, where we tried to set up uh, everything. Uh, so it's a quite quite ideal, but it shows that uh, there are many many add-ons uh, and and still uh, ways to explore and develop further this kind of uh, uh, testing system. Uh, I shared my slides. There is uh, another uh, nice uh, webinar from 2014 where Evelina and David Wolfer were, were presented also. And and to finish. Uh, I would conclude that automated testing and data analysis of socially kept mice is a powerful, efficient, animal-friendly tool for dissecting complex features and behavioral profiles of various mouse models. And uh, 2018, we published uh, finally the, the lesion work, uh, or at least large part of the lesion works uh, uh, done during this uh, uh, time. And I'm time to thank all the people, Sven Krakow, Hans Peter Lip, Anton Rau, Giovanni Colacico, David, and Elisabetta Vanoni, who is not in the paper, but she was very uh, important uh, in coordinating our project. And last but not least, Hans Welzel also. We shared the room with Giovanni and Hans Welzel. We had a lot of discussions over three years about the uh, mouse animal behavior and, and so on. So thank you for your attention.